Hello and thank you for watching my presentation. My name is Attila Shimko and I'm a PhD student at the Department of Radiation Sciences at UNO University in Sweden. For spin echo sequences in MRI, the contrast of a scan is defined by the echo and the repetition times that will determine the weighting of the MR image. As per the signal equation, the two settings will set the weights of the three underlying quantitative maps, namely proton density, the T1 and the T2 relaxation times. The settings highlight different tissues, so in radiotherapy, multiple scans with different contrasts are often performed, and the scans are then used together for subsequent tasks. Of course, this leads to the extra work of performing and registering the scans, which is where the usefulness of contrast transfer comes in, which can retrospectively transfer a scan to a different contrast. For our research, we have collected data from 104 patients using a 3-Tesla SignaPET MR scanner, courtesy of GE Healthcare, with all patients scanned using one of five contrast settings. The specific TE and TR combinations are collected in this table here. Each scan contains 15 slices, and keep in mind that one strength of the proposed method is that the training dataset only needs to contain one contrast per anatomy. That means that we only need multi-contrast scans for the evaluation phase, but not for the training. Since we don't need paired data for training, we are taking the semi-supervised approach of categorical GANs, where the discriminator part is trained to determine the contrast of the input image or to classify it as fake. However, designing the generator proved more difficult, as we have to define what contrast to output. We wanted to avoid the limitations of only transferring to the specific contrast set by us, because we wish to make the train model publicly available and we think that a useful contrast transfer method should transfer any contrast to any other contrast. We achieve this by simply adding a final layer to a UNAT model. Instead of returning a single channel layer, the base network returns three channels and we apply a custom layer on these three channels that mimic the signal equation of the sequence. This way we can control what contrast to generate by inputting the echo and the repetition times to the generator explicitly in a physically meaningful way. This final laser layer also gives the emergent property of our model that these three layers will uniquely find the proton density, the T1 and the T2 relaxation times, even though we know nothing about them during training. And now everything is ready for us to train. Afterwards, the evaluation was done on multi-contrast images, where all five contrasts were acquired and registered using a non-rigid registration method. And we can evaluate how similar the predicted contrasts are to the grand truth, but to gain a better insight, we can also compare the PD, T1 and T2 maps to the results of a least squares approach. When comparing to the least squares method, we need to keep in mind that LSQ requires at least three registered contests, unlike the proposed method, which works with a single input image. We get accurate uh, results for proto density and the T1 relaxation times, but the T2 times are lower than expected, and we believe that including more contrast in the training data would improve these results as well. Our proposed method can, by design, transfer to any selected contrast, and we have also made the model publicly available on our Zenodo site. And to help with the visualization, we have also uploaded a small tool where the model can be applied on any example image, where we can just select the output contrast by hand through changing the TE and the TR values. As uh, the pre preliminary results of our project look really promising, we are currently looking into how the contrast transfer model could be used to improve synthetic CT generation, but those results are for next year. Thank you very much for your interest and make sure to join the live discussion on Thursday and check out the Zenodo page where the train model is made publicly available. Thank you.